Let's learn how to secure pod-to-pod -pod communication using TLS certificates. We know that in a Kubernetes cluster, inter-pod communication is not secure. So we want to enforce using HTTPS and we want to enforce our pods to use the TLS certificates. HTTPS could be enforced at two levels in a Kubernetes cluster. First level will be for the ingress resource where I need to secure the traffic between the user and the ingress. And then second level will be for the pods inside the cluster. Those pods will communicate with each other so I can enforce HTTPS there. And that's what we'll cover into this video. So let's get started. Here, let's say for example that in our case here we have one pod in our cluster and this pod wants to communicate with some one or some other multiple pods inside the cluster itself. So let's say here I have one pod or even multiple pods that are part of the same deployment object. So this communication will be done in HTTP by default and Kubernetes doesn't do anything to enforce HTTPS. But however, in our case here, we want this communication to go through HTTPS. So I want this uh, service exposed in this pod to be exposed in HTTPS using a TLS certificate. So I want to enforce HTTPS at this level right here. How can I do that? Actually, I should provide a TLS certificate to enforce that uh, HTTPS traffic. So the pod will consume that uh, TLS certificate. So the TLS certificate will be at the end, it will, leave, uh, it will be exposed to the pod right here. So we would have something like this, TLS certificate inside the pod. How that TLS certificate will be exposed to the pod? So we have multiple options. Either I embed that TLS certificate inside the Docker container or inside the image itself, and that's a, be a very bad practice, so we should never do that because that pod uh, might be compromised and somebody else might get that uh, TLS certificate. The second option for me is to have a cluster operator. Let's say the DevOps team, for example, that will go to create those TLS certificates and insert them into the pod or expose it through environment variable or expose it through Kubernetes secret. But we want to always have automation in the process. So we can use here the CERT manager, which is an open source project that will enable us to retrieve or create self-signed uh, certificates and then expose it into our pod. Let's see how that works. So my pod at the end will need to retrieve a certificate and that certificate, as we said, will be created by the CERT manager. So I would have here another component that is the CERT manager. The role of the CERT manager here is that it will go to create the TLS certificate or provide the TLS uh, certificate for the pod. So it will do that by creating a Kubernetes secret object. We know those pods can consume secret uh, objects by mounting a volume. So what we'll do here is that we'll go to create Kubernetes uh, secret. And inside this secret, uh, this uh, TLS certificate will be exposed right here as a CA cert. So we would find the different uh, data or the different files related to the certificate. And then we'll find the TLS cert and also the TLS key file. Then this pod will be able to retrieve those values by connecting to this uh, secret. How it will do that? So first we'll go to mount a volume. So it will consume that secret by mounting a volume. So it will go to mount a new volume and the content of that volume will be the secret. And then that secret will be available to our pod through an environment variable. So then my pod should, should be, of course, uh, configured to get that environment variable and then read the secret from there and use it inside the application to enforce the HTTPS traffic. So this is a very simplified uh, uh, architecture here, but in more advanced scenarios, we might have the cert manager connects to some other uh, CA uh, providers like Let's Encrypt or DigiCert or Global Sign and so on to get a certificate that will be created there by an operator. And that's gonna be the following use case where here we can have some external PKA authority and cert manager will connect there in order to retrieve the secret or retrieve 
this TLS certificate. Let's see next how we can implement this architecture. Now let's go to see a demo on how this works. So on this GitHub repository, you will find the scripts and the YAML files that I'll be using during this demo along with the schema for the architecture that we will be uh, using for uh, today. So in my VS code right here, I have cloned that uh, project and here I find the readme file with all the commands that we'll be using and also the YAML files right here. So first step in our lab today is to go to create a new AKS cluster or a new Kubernetes cluster. This will work not only with AKS but with any Kubernetes cluster. So if you are using Minikube, that would be also uh, fine. After creating the cluster, we'll go to install the cert manager into our cluster using the Helm charts. So as you see here, I'm already connected to my cluster. And then next, I'll go to install the Helm charts into this cluster. Let's go do that. So first I need to add that uh, repo for uh, uh, Helm for the Helm chart for the Jetstack, which is uh, the company maintaining cert manager. And then I'll go to use Helm repo update to update all my repo. Maybe there is a new uh, update for the repo. So I'll get it. And then I'll go to use Helm upgrade cert manager, the name of the Helm chart, and then dash dash install to make sure if it's already installed, I'll go to upgrade it. If it's not installed, it, then it will go to install it. And then I'll create a new namespace for the cert manager. I'll call it cert manager and then I'll make sure to install the CRDs and I'll make sure to install the cert manager pods into the Linux node pool. Once it's installed here, it tells me yes, it was installed successfully. Then next I'll go to make sure that cert manager was successfully installed. So here I see the three pods installed. I see the service created, the deployments, the replica set and all is good. Next, I'll go to create a cluster issuer and a certificate. For the cluster issuer in this lab, I want to use a self-signed TLS certificate for simplicity. And yes, in real-world production or staging scenarios, you might use something like Let's Encrypt TLS certificates or Global Sign or DigiSign. So here, I'll keep it simple and I'll just use a self-signed certificate. Cluster issuer here means that this is not an issuer. If it was an issuer, then this will be bound to a specific namespace. If it's cluster issuer, then it means this issuer will be available for all the namespaces, for all the pods and my all namespaces on my cluster. So then next, when I want to create a certificate, I'll provide a name for the certificate. I'll provide the secret name. So this is gonna be the Kubernetes secret that will be created by the cert manager and where cert manager will go to save that TLS certificate. When we create a TLS certificate, we need to provide the common name and the DNS names. And here I provided the name of the service that will expose my pods that I want to secure. So here on the left, I create a deployment and then I expose that deployment through a service and I'll call it app 01, for example. So here I put the full name of my service. And then I have some few arguments here like the users. So this is for digital use signature, key encipherment, server auth, and then for the issuer reference. So here where I reference the cluster issuer that I have created previously, that's called the self signed and it's of kind cluster issuer. It, it might have some other um, available arguments like the key stores. So for Java, for example, maybe you will be using JKS or PKCS 12, and there are many more uh, available options for you with Cert Manager. So let's go here to create the cert, uh, cert issuer and also the certificate. So first I'll go to apply the YAML file for the self-signed cluster issuer, and then I'll apply the certificate and next, when I go to say Kubernetes get the certificate, the secret and the cluster issuer, I will see here the certificate that was created successfully 10 seconds ago. And then I can see here another secret that was created as part of that certificate. And inside this secret, Kubernetes will put the TLS certificate. And you will see here also the cluster issuer that was created. Now, if I go to uh, Kubernetes cube control describe the secret app 01. I would see here that secret name, 
it lives inside the default namespace and the labels and we see here some uh, annotations that were added by the cert manager referencing here the common name the name of the uh, dns service and so on and we see here under the data section the ca cert and the tls certificate and the tls key so those are the values that will be consumed by my pod now let's go back to the deployment that we want to create so here I create an object of type deployment and inside that deployment I'll use the image here provided by GKE and this image was configured actually to consume a TLS certificate it's exposed on port F8443 and then it will go to mount a volume under etc slash tls that volume actually will expose the secret that was created by the cert manager and then using environment variable i will go to get the tls certificate and the tls key values and by the way that docker image is available as an open source project under this repo here for uh, gcp and you can find the docker file and also the main.go file so this is mainly uh, go application uh, was configured to by default accept a tls key and tls certificate so i use it and underneath uh, here i have defined also a service object and uh, that was exposed under cluster IP. This is to expose the service inside the Kubernetes cluster. So it's not exposed externally. However, if I want to expose the service externally, then I would use an ingress controller. And in that case, I would provide a TLS certificate for the ingress, okay? So let's go to deploy this uh, uh, app deploy service. So I see here the deployment and the service was created successfully. Let's go to kube control get uh, service and get the pods to make sure they were deployed successfully. So from here I can see my app 01 service and my three pods for that deployment. Next here, the last step of this video is that here I'll go to create an Nginx pod just for testing. And from within this Nginx pod, I'll go to exec inside this pod and I'll use cure dash dash and secure. And then I provide the URL for the service that I'm exposing. And I know that behind the service, I'm exposing the three pods that uses the TLS certificate. Actually, the three pods uses the same TLS certificate in this case. So if I run enter, from here, I can view the response from that pod and it's served through HTTPS. So let's make sure again that this is actually using the our TLS certificate and that TLS certificate is a valid one. So here again, I'll use the same curl command with that dash dash secure and then dash V and this will go to verify the TLS certificate. And yes, here I get the output out of this command. So it's uh, uh, getting response from this IP address, which is one of the IP address, of the three pods that I've deployed. And it's now connected to that service address. Here it did establish the uh, handshake with that uh, certificate. And here I did actually provided the uh, SSL connection and some values for from that certificate. So it's using the common name that I have uh, provided right here. And it tells me that this uh, SSL certificate verify results. This is a self-signed certificate. Great. So this is um, a demonstration that now our pod was exposed through HTTPS using our TLS certificate. What I've done in this demo is just for demoing and for simplicity, I kept many things uh, simple, but in real world scenarios, actually, if you are using AKS or any other uh, Kubernetes uh, cluster, you would be using some other cloud providers and you would be using more strong auth authentication mechanism like here workload identity with uh, AKS. So inside this link here that I provide, you will see more in-depth uh, details about how you should proceed when you are using Kubernetes in production. I hope you find this content helpful. And if you are looking for um, more content about Kubernetes, Terraform, and DevOps, please go to check out my YouTube channel where I post regularly many videos about these topics. Thank you.